So you release that tendency to grip the thighs or the knees. And take three deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Right now, go ahead and close the mouth and just breathe evenly in and out the nose. Soften the lips, soften your jaw, soften the wrinkles out of our, our skeptical foreheads. So a lot about what's been going on with the equinox and this recent moon, the energies are all about uh, balancing the harmony between the masculine and feminine energies. So that's, that's really the deeper intention of our class and why we've picked these specific postures is to bring harmony to the fire and water channels in the body, masculine, feminine, positive, negative, if we're looking at it on a polarity. So we're just trying to find some balance in our body because the world seems to be awkwardly out of balance. So today we're gonna to start by, go ahead and keep your eyes closed, but you're gonna draw a circle on the palm of your right hand, just one big circle, and this represents the sun. And then on the palm of your left hand, draw the crescent moon, just kind of go from top to bottom, making almost like a C shape on your hand, that represents the moon. And then place your left hand over the top of your right hand. This represents the earth, mother earth. And now bring the palms over your belly button. And this represents or connects us to the universal energy. As we unite all of these energies in the body, take a nice deep breath in. And a nice long breath out. From here, go ahead and slide your right hand out and bring it to the crown of your head and take another long breath in and an even longer breath out. From here, let the left hand slide up and over your heart and one more time, nice long breath in and an even longer breath out. From here, bring your right hand down to cover the left hand. So now both hands are over the heart. And we'll invite a nice deep breath in and share the sound OM three times. Ah. And from here, just blink the eyes gently a few times as you come back into your space, into the brightness of your space. And then from here, we'll extend the arms and legs out in front of us. As always, we wanna start by moving the joints and we start with the smallest ones first. So just squeeze and stretch the fingers and toes and we'll do that five times. Good, and then point the toes and fingers, draw the fingers down underneath your wrists. And then draw the fingertips up and back as you flex the feet. Good, so point and flex four more times. Good. And then from here, bring the base of the wrists together, hug the thumbs inside the fingers and just flip the wrists in and out a few times. 
There's somebody in the waiting room. I'm going five times, two more. Good, and then flip the other way, just reverse. Three, four, five. And then because we're having some wrist stuff happening in our community, let's do a little bit more with the wrist. So just sitting up nice and tall, shoot your fingers out straight in front of you, and just do a little side to side. Just fan your fingers side to side, and you can switch which one crosses over the top. Yep, that works too, Bhakti. Good. Okay, now flip them over and gently draw the fingers underneath as you reach out through the palm and then switch to the other side. Just a nice little stretch. We're going to do that five times on each side. Three, four, and five. Good, okay, now take your hands back behind you and if it feels more comfortable, you can make fists so you don't put any weight into the wrist joint. You're up on the top of your fists and then just rotate the ankles. Three, we try to go five times each, one for each element, ether, air, fire, water, and earth. Okay, reverse. All right, now let's get to the knees and just draw one knee in at a time. And again, we're gonna do this five times on each side. Good. Squeeze your abdominal muscles as you do this. Don't leave it all to those little tendons and muscles in the hips. Good, one more time. Good, okay. From here, go ahead and come onto your hands and knees. And just take a moment, bring the hips to the heels and come down into child's pose. And we're just gonna take three really full breaths here, resting the forehead on the floor, relaxing your arms, letting your elbows touch down. Deep breath in and feel the belly expand and press into your thighs. And as you exhale, notice the abdomen contracting and drawing back towards the spine. So even here, this gentle compression can start to cause a little bit of heat. So if you're needing to release that, take the knees a little bit wider and take a few more breaths. One more nice long breath in. Slow it down on the way out. And then inhale, come up to your hands and knees. And just start by swaying the hips side to side. So we warmed up most of our joints. We just need to get into the hips and spine a little bit. Oh, this is my favorite. See if you can get the hip closer and closer to the floor on each side. Be very gentle with your shoulders and elbows. And if this is painful for your wrists, Sally, again, you can always come up onto the fists. Okay, coming to your hands and knees or fists and knees. Let's do a little bit more with the, um, the hip. So reach your right leg back, toes on the ground, then lift the leg up and just swing that knee up and over and bring the knee back down. Stretch back, lift up, swing it up and over. One more time, reach back, lift it up, and then pull it up and over. Good, left foot back. Lift it up, draw the knee around and over. Good, stretch that foot back. Lift, bring the knee up and over one more time. Great, okay. Staying on your fists or coming onto the palms, we're gonna start now just moving gently back and forth through this cat-cow position. So pushing the floor away from you, draw your chin to your chest, your tailbone underneath. And then release, inhale, let the breath flood in as you push the floor away from you and stretch the front side of the body. Exhale and round, contract your abdominal muscles as you pull the abdomen in and up. Inhale, release the belly, compress the back and the kidneys. Good. Exhale, round the spine. Let's do that two more times in each direction. 
keeping the tops of the feet flat on the floor. Right where your shoelaces would be, find a little bit of pressure in the feet pushing down. Great, okay, let's find our way into a neutral spine. And again, stretch that right leg back behind you. Keep your ball of the foot on the floor and really stretch into the calf muscle, reaching back through that right heel. Good, and then shift forward just a little bit, lift the back leg, cross it over the left, and then look up and over your left shoulder and see if you can see that right foot. Getting a nice stretch into the right side body. Good, release and come back. Stretch that left leg back behind you, really press into the toes so you stretch back through the heel. Shift forward, lift that leg up, cross it over your right foot, and then look back over the right shoulder and gaze at your left foot. Breathe deeply here and really focus on breathing into this left side of your body, feeling some expansion down into the hips. Great, come back over, bring the big toes together, the knees apart, and walk yourself back into child's pose. This time, rest your forehead on the floor, but cross your arms, and we're gonna put the right hand over the top of the left, elbows are bent and down, and breathe deeply. We're gonna be here for two minutes. So settle in and find some comfort, some ease and allow for flow, breath, and prana. Forward folds in general are very soothing for the mind. So you'll find that this particular sequence is a good one uh, for meditation preparation. We do a lot to soothe the nervous system, stretch out the hips, and focus our mind. Good, we have another minute here. So this time let's take the left hand over the top of the right. So again, we're balancing the flow of masculine and feminine energies by working with both sides of the body and both hemispheres of our brain. Balasana is also very, very good for the kidneys, the adrenals, and the low back. A few more seconds here, continuing to breathe deeply. Okay, now reach your arms out in front of you. Draw up onto the fingertips, pulling the elbows away from the floor. Take a deep breath in, a long breath out. And on your next inhalation, Draw yourself up onto your hands and knees. Align yourself, so bring the knees back underneath the hips, the palms underneath the shoulders. Gentle bend in the elbows. Go ahead and draw the toes underneath. Look forward slightly. Shift your hips back over the heels, and then lift yourself up into your first and gentle downward dog. So start with the elbows and knees both bent, and pedal out the feet. So as we're in our downward dog this morning, and, and feel free if you need to come down onto the elbows and be more in this dolphin type position, that will protect your wrists a little bit more. But in either position, I want you to reach into your elbows and out from the shoulders. And just feel that you can reach with your arms without reaching into your hands. And that, that intention really helps the shoulders open up. Okay, lifting up really high onto the balls of the feet. Press into the arms and move the head and neck back through the arms so that you can look more at your feet. And then melt the heels down if they'll go down. If you're in dolphin, it might be a little bit more difficult. Good, and then look up at the space between your hands and you're gonna walk your feet all the way up behind the wrists. Good. And from here again, gentle bend in the knees so that you can really feel your torso laying in your lap and then take a hold of opposite elbows and just swing your torso side to side. 
like a big elephant trunk. Good, and then come to center, shake the head no. And shake your head yes. Good, take your hands to the backs of the legs. Bent knees, we're gonna draw the torso kind of up away from the thighs. Start to straighten out your legs as you come all the way up. Keep your hands sliding up the back of your legs so we protect the low back. Coming all the way up to standing. Good, then reach the arms up at the top, look up. And then exhale as you pull the elbows open and stretch across the front of your chest. Beautiful. And then take one or two steps up to the top of the mat. And again, bring the hands over the belly button and take one long settling breath. Good, on your next inhalation, pull the hands away from the belly, find some expansion in the chest, lift your chin slightly, and then exhale, bring your hands together right in front of your heart. From here, shoot the fingers out and up. Gentle bend in your knees as you find a little tiny back bend behind the heart. And then exhale, hinging forward at the hips, come all the way down, bringing your hands to either side of your feet. Good, inhale, lift your head slightly as you reach your right foot back and bring the right knee to the floor. Keep your hands down and if you need to be on blocks, that's totally legit. Um, but you don't want to be crunching your head and lifting your chin to try to look forward. We wanna keep the whole spine long. So from the back of your head to the tip of your tailbone is a nice long line without any kinks. Good. take another deep breath in here. As you exhale, lift the back knee and step back into downward dog. At the bottom of the breath, use your inhale to draw you forward into plank position and then lower the knees, chest and chin to the floor. Slide the hips back and slowly peel the head, neck and chest away from the mat. Bhujangasan. Good. Exhale, press up to the hands and knees, and two, downward dog. From here, gaze up at the space between your hands, draw your right foot forward, and let the left knee come down. You want to keep your hands connected to the floor or blocks. Look forward slightly as you shift into your hips, keeping this nice 45 degree angle in the knee and ankle. On your next exhalation, press into that back toe, draw the left foot to the top and empty the breath as you squeeze the belly towards the thighs. Slide your hands up the legs so that you can tuck your thumbs into your hip crease. Draw the elbows and shoulders back, look forward and come up with strong legs all the way up, release the arms, reach up, look up, exhale to your heart. Inhale, release the hands down and expand across the front of the chest. Exhale, press the hands together right in front of your heart. Inhale, reach the fingers out and up as you find a gentle back bend behind the heart. And then exhale, folding forward, reach forward as you come all the way down. Good, hands on either side of the feet. Inhale and set your left foot back. Knee comes to the floor. Hands are down, look forward, shift into your hips a little bit. Feel the weight of gravity pulling you down at your center. And then exhale, lift that back knee and step into downward dog. At the bottom of the breath, draw yourself forward into this plank position. Lower the knees, chest and chin down gently. Slide your feet back and then peel the heart up away from the floor. Draw the shoulders down and back. Good, from here, press up to the hands and knees and exhale into downward dog. Look forward, draw the left foot forward, right knee comes down. Again, shifting forward into your hips. Try not to kink your cervical spine, looking forward, but getting nice compression into the descending colon with the thigh and belly connection. Take another deep breath in. 
Exhale, press into that back toe, lift the back knee away from the floor, and then step to the front of the mat. Empty the breath as you gently pull your forehead towards the shins. From here, slide the hands all the way up, tuck your thumbs into your hip crease, draw the elbows and shoulders back, start to look forward as you rise all the way up, take the hands up, stretch up, and exhale back to your heart. Inhale and expand, bring your hands to your side, lift your heart, lift your chin slightly, and then exhale, gathering all that energy right back into your center. This time, interlace your fingers, send the palms out and up as you lift up onto your toes, finding a really full breath in. Take another sip of breath, really pack the breath in, another sip, and then exhale, release the hands, lower the heels, and hinge forward as you bring your hands down. Hands on either side of the feet, step the right foot back, let that knee come down, look forward. We're staying here, same posture, we're really working into this traditional lunging position. From here, exhale, lift the back knee, and we're going to step right into plank. From our plank, we're going to shift forward slightly, bend into the elbows, lower the thighs, tops of the feet down, and then resisting gravity, use your triceps as you lower down into a bhujangasana. Good, keeping your chest, chin, and ribs off the floor. From here, turn the toes under, activate your thighs, pull the knees away from the floor, plus back up through this plank position, and then back into downward dog. Beautiful. Look at the space between your hands and draw the right foot forward. Let the knee come down, and this time, take the arms up overhead. Reaching straight up through your fingers, and then exhale the hands down, lift the back knee, and step to the top. Empty the breath, kind of pull your chest towards the thighs. Keep a gentle bend in the knees so you don't hurt your back. Slide the hands up to the hips, draw the shoulders and elbows back, and come all the way back up to standing. Reach up to look up, exhale to your heart. Staying right with the flow, interlace, inhale, lift up onto your toes. Really pull more breath in, fill the lungs as tightly as you can, and then let the breath out as you fold forward and bring the hands on either side of the feet. Step back with your left foot, nice big inhale, bring the knee down and look forward. Exhale, step back into plank. Shift forward slightly, lowering the thighs, tops of the feet down, and then curl or roll down into Bhujangasana. Keep the elbows pulling in towards the body and reaching back towards your feet. Turn the toes under, activate your thighs, press up to this plank position, and then back to downward dog. Beautiful. Step forward with your left foot. This time bring the right knee down, but take the arms up overhead. Beautiful. We're really balancing both sides of the body by being even and repetitive on both sides. And exhale the hands down, lift the back knee, and step to the top. Empty the breath. Hands to the hips, elbows and shoulders back. Come all the way up, reach up, look up, and exhale to your heart. Good. We'll take one little break here. So let your hands rest at your sides. Step your feet a little bit wider than your hips and close your eyes. Make sure your knees are unlocked. You're not sitting forward into your hips and your shoulders are relaxed. And just feel the tempo of your heart. Feel the release of svedana, the sweating in the body. The sweating is a way we release toxins and excess heat. It's really good for pitta dosha to sweat a little every day. Okay, let's continue. One more round of Surya Namaskar coming back up to the top of the mat. Take a deep breath in, step your feet together, and exhale the hands together in front of your heart. Let's continue with the interlace and lift. So interlace the fingers, stretch them out and up as you lift up onto your toes, and then exhale the heels down, fold forward. 
come all the way down. From here, you're gonna take the hands to the front of the shins, lift up halfway, pause in this half lift, and heel toe the feet apart so that you can come into your malasan. You might wanna keep the feet together if you've got a very advanced malasan posture. Good, from here, take another deep breath in, reach out through the crown of your head, and then exhale, bring the hips down, bring the palms together in front of your heart. Good. From here, let's take the right hand down, kind of catty corner, right out in front of your right foot, fingertips on the floor. You're gonna press your tricep into the back of your knee, into the inside of your knee, and then inhale, open up the left arm. So I'm expanding in both directions. My right knee and my right shoulder are having a beautiful conversation as they compress against each other, so I can open up. Good, and then do that on the opposite side. Left hand comes down and reach the right arm up. Good, bring both hands down right in front of your feet, and you're just gonna step your right foot back and bring your hands on either side of the feet. So we're gonna stay in a high lunge this time, and this is a great place to incorporate blocks. I like to have mine nice and wide. So we're just gonna move through. Inhale, sink the hips just a little bit, shift forward, and then exhale, round the back and bring the forehead to the knee. Inhale, look forward, sink into your hips. Exhale, round the back, forehead to the knee. One more time. Inhale, stretch and look forward. Exhale, round the back. Inhale, come back into the lunge position, hands to the floor, and step back into plank. Again, from plank, we're gonna lower the knees, chest and chin. Press the feet back, and this time interlace your hands behind your back. Reach back through the arms and elbows as you lift your heart and chest away from the floor. Take a deep breath in here. As you exhale, look over the right shoulder. Inhale back through center. Exhale, look over the left shoulder. Good. Inhale to center. Bring your hands by the low ribs. Turn the toes under, press up to your hands and knees, and then back to downward dog. Beautiful. Okay, this time, bring your feet together so that you make a triangle on your mat. Your hands are the base, the feet are the top. And from here, take your right leg up. Keep the hips squared, but flex and reach back through your right heel. Take another deep breath in. And as you exhale, draw the right foot forward. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. Inhale, look forward, sink the hips down. Exhale, round the back, bring the forehead towards the knee. Inhale, look forward, sink the hips down. Nice big breath in. Exhale, round, bring the chin to the chest, forehead to the knee. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, round. Inhale, look forward. And from here, squeeze the belly muscles, squeeze the hips together, and step the left foot to the top. Empty your breath as you fold over the legs. Good, and then from here you can reach out to the sides as we come all the way up. Reach up, look up. Exhale to your heart. Stay with the breath, interlace, inhale, lift up onto your toes. Exhale, release the hands apart, lower the heels down and come all the way down. Hands to the front of the shin, inhale, lift halfway, heel till the feet apart, and then exhale, hips down into malasana. Good, we'll take more of a traditional posture here. So just squeeze the palms together in front of your heart. Find this resisting communication between the arms and the knees and take a deep breath in. From here, plant your hands down and step your left foot back. Same thing, so stay in this high lunge. Hopefully you have blocks. If not, your hands can be on the floor or up on your fingertips or on your fists. From here, inhale, look forward, sink the hips just like you did in the last one. But then exhale, reach back through the hip, draw the right toe away from the floor, bring the forehead towards the knee and stretch the whole back side of this right leg. Inhale, shift forward, look forward. Exhale, draw the right toes up and stretch the hamstring. Inhale, shifting forward. Exhale, shifting back. 
Good, inhale to come forward, step back into plank. Slowly lower the knees and thighs, feet to the floor, reversing down into Bhujangasana. One nice deep breath in here. Good, and then exhale, press up to the hands and knees and back into downward dog. Bring the toes together, the feet together. Hands are your steady base. And inhale, lift the left leg up. Keep the hips squared to the mat and reach back through the left heel. And then draw the left foot forward. Step that foot down. And we repeat on this side. So inhale, sink the hips, look forward. Exhale, draw the left toes up. Bring the forehead towards the shin. One side might be tighter than the other. Inhale, sinking forward. Exhale, drawing back. Inhale forward, exhale back. Good, one more time forward. Squeeze the hips and belly together as you bring the right foot up to meet the left and empty the breath as you fold over the legs. Take the arms out and up as you float up, look up, exhale to your heart. Good, let your hands rest at your sides. Just take two resting breaths here. Unlock your knees. Unlock your jaw and soften your forehead. Okay, so go ahead now and face me, maybe me, or just make sure you can hear me. We're going to do a little bit of balance with the incorporation of alternate nostril breath. So I want you to pick one side of your body that you always feel more strong on in terms of doing a balance posture. And we're gonna start on that side. So for me, it's my left because I once broke my heel on my right leg uh, and foot. And so that one's not as strong, even though it's been years. So I'm gonna start by activating the muscles in my left leg, unlock my left knee and start to send energetic roots down through the mat, down through the floor, down into the earth. And even if you're on the 15th floor of a building, those are some strong roots. Just see them going all the way down, floor by floor, connecting with the soil and rooting yourself firmly into earth. From here, bring your hands to your hips and then bring your whatever foot up because we might all be on a different side up to some placement on the leg where you feel you can balance. The only place you don't want to put your foot is on your knee because you could pop your knee out. So above or below the knee, hands are on the hips. And then if it feels good, bring your hands together in front of your heart and pick something out in front of you. It could be a speck of dirt on the floor. It could be a, a plant, a pet. Just find something to hold your gaze. And then if it feels comfortable, even if it doesn't, let's just try taking the arms up overhead. Find some expansion, some growth, and some instability, right? Stability and instability, we have to have them both. Good. From here, bring your hands back to your heart. Gently take the foot off and down. Good. So just shake out your legs if you need to. And come to a comfortable standing position. Unlock your knees. And we're going to incorporate alternate nostril breathing here. So empty the breath and then close your right nostril with your thumb. Inhale through the left side. Close the left with your ring finger. Open the right side and exhale. Inhale through the right. Close. Exhale through the left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. And a nice long exhale out the right side. At the bottom of this breath, release your hand down and take three normal breaths in and out both nostrils. Okay. 
And now start to shift your weight into the opposite leg. Firm and connect, contracting these muscles. And start to send down your energetic roots through the mat floor all the way down. Finding the soil and connecting with earth. Hands to the hips. And take a moment to place your left foot anywhere on the leg. It feels comfortable and it may not be the same position as the other side. <laughs> Good. And once you feel stable, somewhat stable, go ahead and bring the hands together in front of your heart and find that point on the floor. Should be the same thing you're gazing at. Same thing that holds your gaze. And then find some expansion as you reach and grow your branches up towards the sun. And this may cause a little swaying and instability, but remember how rooted and grounded you really are. That even if you fall, you're still connected to earth. And let's take two more breaths here. Good. Bring the hands together. And then down to the heart, release this leg, set it down, and shake them out. Wow, 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 wow. Can we do this thing? Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Bhakti. Okay, let's come back up to the top of the mat and slowly make our way into one or two more standing postures. Good. So from here, inhale, stretch the arms up. And from here, I want you to even think about reaching up through your elbows versus reaching up through your fingers that really starts to move and open up the shoulders. Good, exhale and hinge forward, coming all the way down, hands on either side of the feet, and then just walk back into downward dog. Good. From here, extend your right leg up and back behind you, and then step it through in between your hands. You're gonna turn your back heel down and straighten through your front leg, setting up for pyramid pose. So you can have one hand on a block, your right hand, and then take your left arm up and over into pyramid pose. Good. So we almost have warrior two feet, but both legs are straight instead of one being bent, and you're reaching up through that top arm. You got it. Good. You want to work towards that front leg straightening without locking the knee. Good. You're doing great, guys. All right, take another deep breath in here. And slowly lower the left hand all the way down. You're going to turn your back foot up, and we're going to step back into downward dog. Extend the left leg up and back behind us, and then exhale, step it through. Turn the back heel down, straighten the left leg, bring your left hand to the outside or inside of that left foot and then take the right arm up towards the ceiling. And just feel into your body here where most of us feel this stretch is in this lower right hip, but you might be feeling it in the back of your left hamstring, a little bit into your left hip. You can play with the arm position and see how that affects your body, taking it back behind you or up over head. You can even reach back down towards that right foot. Take another two breaths in three konasana, three angled pose. And then exhale, both hands down, turn the back foot up and step back into downward dog. From here, bring the knees to the floor and set yourself back into child's pose. And just take whatever variation feels right for you. Wide knees, closed knees, straight arm, bent arm, Whatever feels right. Arms in front of you, arms along the sides. There's so many ways, so many perspectives on every posture. Rest, relax, and breathe for five breaths. Okay, so wherever you are in your child's pose, I want you to shift into 
more a quote-unquote traditional posture. So if you need to, bring the knees just a little bit closer together. They don't have to touch. And then take your arms back behind you. And where you should be right now is that the, it's called Kapala Marma. It's where your hairline and your forehead meet. That's, that's where your forehead should be touching. And your arms are just at your sides and opening across the back of the shoulder blades as the shoulders just fall down. So from here, we're going to use this as the preparatory position for rabbit pose or sa 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 sana. And one thing that we have to be very, very mindful of in this posture is that as we move into it, you're not putting weight into the head, that there's actually the weight is held in the suspension of the arms and the elongation that's happening in the spine. So maybe listen first if you haven't done this posture very often in your practice. What you want to do is take a hold of the bottoms of your feet, really grip your heels nice and tight. And then you're going to draw your chin towards your chest and we'll start to lift your heels up and away from the floor. So as I do that, there isn't any weight in my head. I can like move it around. I'm not resting any weight in my forehead, but I am drawing my chin towards my chest and trying to move my forehead towards my knee. So I'm really rounding in the back as I lift the hips up. So eventually the crown of my head is pointing straight down, but still there's no weight in my head. And I continue to pull against my feet as I stretch the whole back of my spine from tail to top. Join me if you're not already and come into this posture for two or three breaths. And the key here is to continue to squeeze your chin towards your chest and that takes any uh, potential weight out of the head. Okay, go ahead and send the hips back down. Go ahead and bring your arms out in front of you. And just come into this version of child's pose for two breaths. There's almost no other posture that is that therapeutic for the spine. It can actually make you taller because it creates so much space between the vertebrae. Okay, from here just walk yourselves up so that we're sitting on the shins in Vajrasana and bring your hands to your lap. And even if it's just a moment, because sometimes this is tough on the knees, just take a moment to be in this shape, in this space, in this breath, noticing the effects of everything that we've done so far and specifically rabbit pose. I can feel a lot of heat escaping from the west side of my body. That's the back side of my body. And I feel almost as if I've done a little bit of Kapalabhati breathing with this energy being activated in the crown of my head. Okay, go ahead and blink your eyes open. And from here, just shift yourself so you're sitting to the left of your heels and interlace your hands behind your back. Good, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, bring the right elbow down towards the heels as you turn to look up at the left elbow, stretching from elbow to hip, and take two breaths. It's a tough position to breathe in, but really try to expand into the left lung. Good, inhale, come back through center, hands down, we're just gonna shift to the other side. And I don't know if this is happening for you, but what should be happening is that when I'm on my left side, my right heel or my right foot is over the left. And then when I go to the other side, they switch sides. So there's this constant activation and balancing of the uh, lunar and solar channels in the body. All right, so we're on this side now. <laughs> Interlace the hands behind the back. Gen oh no, it's the other side, my bad to the right side. All right, so now we're gonna gently pull the left elbow down towards the left heels and look up at the right elbow. Breathe deeply, three deep breaths into the right lung. Really try to expand and stretch into your right side. Send that breath right down into this hip. Beautiful, okay, go ahead and come back through center. 
Good, and then just swing your legs out in front of you. Okay, so now we're going to move through a series of three semi-forward folds. We're gonna do Paschimottanasana, Janu Sirsasana, and that's going to be, um, what's the right word? In between, we'll do a twist, because twists are very supportive for doing forward folds. Okay, so starting in um, staff position, so your legs are out in front of you, we wanna just spin the flesh away from the sits bone so that you can really feel that bone connect to the floor. So it's like a spin and, and pull away. <clears throat> and then for me, I always like to start this series with a couple of blocks. We got these little um, half mini travel blocks that at first I was like, <laughs> Bleh! I don't like the little blocks. But now I really like them because they offer so much more variation in height than you get just out of one block. So I'm really finding um, a flow with them. All right, so I'm gonna start here. Feet are flexed, inhale, reach up through your elbows, even though you're reaching up through your fingers, just find that activation through the elbow. And then exhale, hinging at your hips, just like we did in our forward fold, reaching out and forward towards the feet, and just come into whatever variation is comfortable for you. I'm doing what's comfortable for me, but this might be what's comfortable for you. In fact, this is what I did this morning. <laughs> I'm just a little bit lim more limber now. Okay, so reaching forward and then resting the head down on blocks or you could have your arms stacked. But what you do wanna focus on is that you continue to flex your feet and it's as if you wanna press down your hamstring into the mat. Your arms can be resting at your sides. If you can reach your feet, I'd like you to squeeze your big toe. And let's stay here for two minutes. So Paschimottanasana is an amazing posture. It, this posture actually translates as stretching the west side, which is the back side of the body. It activates a whole bunch of, uh, as does Janu Sirsash, and a whole bunch of nerve ganglion that are in our hips. So it open, opens up the hips and can relieve any sciatic pain that shoots down the legs. It's really, really good for low back pain. A great posture for vata and kapha. It is a little heat aggravating for pitta. So what you want to do there is to come into a wider angle forward fold or make sure that you're you have some support or um, blocks or pillow or something so that you don't compress so much into the belly and thighs. All right, one more minute. Continuing to squeeze that toe. Make sure you're breathing deeply. Your breath should be nice and slow, almost like you're in a yoga nidra. Okay. Imagine you're kicking your heels away from you. Really press the center of your hamstrings down into the floor as you reach forward and then come all the way up. Good. Bring your hands down by your sides. Draw the right knee in and then step it up and over your left leg. Good, preparing for our twist, good. Wrap your right arm around the front of the shin, take your left hand behind you, take a deep breath in, sit up really nice and tall, and then exhale, begin to twist from your hips, the belly, the ribs, the chest, the shoulders, and then finally the neck and chin can maybe look around to look back over that right shoulder. But if it feels too crunchy in your neck or shoulders, just keep your chin in line with the chest. Let's take three long breaths here. Continuing to stomp or press down through that right foot. Twisting helps to squeeze all of the nerves and tendons along the spine. And when you release that squeeze, a whole blunt bunch of fresh oxygenated blood floods into, into the area, feeding the spine with energy and prana.
Okay, slowly unwind with the head, neck, chest, ribs, and belly, coming all the way around. And then we're gonna bring the right foot back over and set the knee down for Janu Sirsasan. And again, I like to just pull the flesh away from this right hip. And then I like to take my blocks to the outside of my left leg because sometimes it's really easy just to fold kind of diagonally out over the right. But in Janu Sirsasan, we wanna to try to bring almost the right or the ascending colon to the thigh, to the left thigh. So there's almost a little bit of a twist as we fold over this left leg. So I like to start by taking my left hand back behind me, reach the right arm up, and then as you hinge at your hips, fold forward and cross this right arm over the left side of that left outer edge of your foot, and then bring your forehead to the blocks. Continue to flex your feet. You can set your fingertips down behind and in front of you, and take three breaths. Good. Now after three breaths, we're gonna swing this left arm out and around and take it over the top. So now the blocks become a little bit of a problem unless you bring it onto your shin. You wanna cross your arms so that the hands just, or the, uh, sorry, the wrists kind of drape over the ankle on either side. Three deep breaths. Janu Sirsasan is also really opening for the knees, which makes it another reason why this posture is so great for a meditation prep. It really opens the knees and hips, allowing us to sit comfortably for long periods at a time. Just another 30 seconds or so here. Nice deep breaths. Good. Bring your hands to either side of this left leg and just walk yourself up. Good. Support the right knee up and then extend your legs out. And we're coming back into our forward fold. So now I know I'm going to be able to go a little bit lower. Inhale, reach up through the arms. Exhale, hinging forward as I reach forward for my feet and bring the head down onto the block. I think we can maybe do without one of these. Good. And again, taking the peace fingers in between the second and first toe and then pressing into the base of your nail bed with your thumb. This is activating kundalini energy at the base of the spine. It also activates the down and outward flow of a pana. So it's really activating to the lower part of the spine. And the elongation, the stretching that we're getting in the spine, the compression and stretching, that's what activates all this energy down at the base of the spine. And kundalini is considered this spiritual energy that awakens our consciousness and awakens our connection to all things. But it can be a little scary the first time you experience it. It feels like almost like electricity moving up and down the spine. So if that happens for you, just breathe deep and stay calm. Okay, flex your feet, activate your thighs and hamstrings, press into your toes as you kind of lift up halfway and then walk yourself the rest of the way up. Draw the left knee in and over. Good. Wrap the right arm around the front of the shin. Take the left arm behind you. Sit up nice and tall. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale. Look back behind you. Nice deep twist. Pressing into this left foot. And spinning or twisting the whole spine. Gently the whole spine. Let's take three long breaths here. And see if you can really incorporate that Dirga Svasan breath. So the three-part breath, breathing in through the belly, expanding into the sides, stretching the ribs, and then at the top of the breath, noticing the shoulders lift just slightly. And as you exhale, the shoulders relax, the ribs relax, and the belly comes back in. And then it all happens again as we inhale. 
and exhale. Slowly unwind, head, neck, chest, ribs, and belly. And then bring your left leg up and over and coming into Janusir Sasana on this side. Okay, so for me, I, I need to be mindful. So I want you to check in with yourself if there's anything that you need to be mindful about. <laughs> but I injured this knee, so I'm going to just give it a little bit of support. Taking my block to the outside of the right leg, take my right hand behind me, inhale, reach up through the left, and then exhale, fold over the right leg, bringing the left hand out in front of me and the forehead onto the block. I'm gonna take two or three breaths here as we settle into John Nusir Sashan, head to knee pose. And after a few breaths as I settle into this pose, I'm gonna sweep the right arm around and take it over the top of the left. So now we're opposite that we were the other side. So this is activating more the uh, masculine or um, solar channels in the body. And the spiritual significance is that it really awakens this kundalini energy and allows the spine to prepare for meditation so that we can draw that energy up to the crown of the head. It also brings a sense of wisdom and discernment to our digestive system. So the connection of the forehead to the knee or to the leg is activating one marma point with another marma point. So it creates this optimal ability for communication between the two systems. Right now we're con connecting our brain and digestive system. They're already connected, but we're facilitating the communication between them. Let's take two more long breaths here. And then just bring your hands on either side of that foot and slowly walk yourself up. And one more time, bring that knee up. Let's go back into our forward fold one last time. Inhale, reach up through the arms and exhale, fold over the legs. And just noticing how this posture has transformed over just the last few minutes of practice. Bringing your forehead to a block. And again, pressing into the base of the nail bed on the big toe, pressing that marma point. It's called Chipra Marma. K-S-H-I-P-R-A. <laughs> nice steady breath. Could activate your legs, kick your heels away from you, press into the big toe as you straighten out the arms, and then walk up. Good. Beautiful, set the block off to the side for just a moment. Scoot forward and come to lie down on the back. All right, so we've been doing a lot of forward folding, so we need to give a little bit of attention to the back side of the body. I'm sorry, to the front side of the body. And so we're gonna do a little kind of restorative pose. So I want you to take your block and you're gonna come into preparation for bridge pose and we're just gonna lift the hips away from the floor and then put your block underneath the sacrum. So make it nice and wide or you can be, you know, find the height that's right for you but I would suggest staying away from the highest height that your block can go. So not this way, this or this are good. All right, and then from here, roll the palms open, thumbs go away from the body and walk your feet out. Good, so just be gentle with yourself as you come into this posture. And if it feels too crunchy in your low back, take your feet a little bit wider maybe, let the toes roll out. If that still doesn't fix it, you can just bend your knees and bring the soles of the feet to the floor. But this is a really opening posture for the front side of the body and it actually does support the spine in that opposite direction. So. We've got to 
expand and compress all sides, all directions of the body. So take five resting breaths here. Beautiful, one or two more long breaths. Good, and then just bring one knee up at a time. Bring your hands back down, press into the feet, lift off the blocks, slide them away, set your hips down, and then hug your knees into your chest. Good. From here, take the arms out to a T. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, slowly lower the knees over to the left. Look to the left as you watch the knees come down. And then trace the chin across the chest as you roll the head over to look out over the right arm. We're going to stay here for one full minute. Breathing nice and deep. I read an article this week about... Um, how people are utilizing Ayurveda and yoga as uh, either palliative care for uh, terminal illnesses, cancers, and such. Um, and one of the things that I read was that people who spend 15 minutes or more in a reclined posture like this have such a cleansing effect on the body. And one article in particular, this gentleman mentioned, that he thought this practice in particular was of great significance in his ability to shrink his tumor uh, to a size that they were able to remove it at. So yoga and Ayurveda are tricky to come to them at such you know, critical moments in our life, but they're very supportive as a holistic um, way to approach any illness. They work quite well with other modalities. Okay, so we just did a minute, but imagine if we had time to stay here for 11 more minutes. <laughs> All right, let's bring the knees back up through the center. Set your feet down, straighten out your spine. Bring the knees back up and then slowly lower them over to the right. Gaze to the right as your knees settle down. And then trace the chin across the chest as you roll over to look out your left thigh. Good. One full minute will be here. So close your eyes if that feels comfortable, but continue breathing deeply. I love yoga. It's such a complete practice. It, it's exercise. It's cleansing, it's spiritual, it helps me connect and ground to myself and my community. It's so complete. I'm living a lifestyle that is right for my constitution and practicing yoga every day is a great uh, benefit to my self-care routine. few more lovely seconds here. Breathing deep. Now go ahead and bring the head up. Bring the knees up. Place the feet down for just a second. Straighten out your spine and then bring the feet back up and take a hold of the feet for a happy baby pose. And first start with the hands on the inside of the feet. We usually start on the outside and just kind of hold the ball of your foot and shake your legs. Shake your hips, this feels really good for the hips. Good, okay, then take a hold of the outside of the feet and gently pull the knees down towards the floor as you flex your feet. Good, release, hug your knees into your chest and bring the forehead to the knees as you hug into a nice tight little ball. 
And then set your feet down, set your head down, set your arms at your sides, and we're gonna do this shimmy. So you just kind of push into your feet and move yourself inside your skin. Okay, we're shaking off any trauma, any difficult conversations or thoughts or emotions we've experienced this week. We are shaking it all off. All right, walk your feet down a little bit further. Continue to shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. A little bit further the legs go. Keep shaking, keep shaking. And then finally extend your legs all the way out and just flap your feet around so you're shaking still your whole body. Good, and then really shake. And be still. Maybe move your legs a little bit. Turn your head side to side. Just doing some slight adjustments to bring the body into a position that is comfortable for being absolutely still. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, sink into the back side of your body. With each exhalation sinking deeper and deeper into the earth, into the mat into the support of gravity. And then in your mind, I want you to hold the awareness of your whole body. Don't move anything, don't adjust or manipulate your breath. Just hold the awareness of your whole body, front, side, and back, breath, thoughts, and emotions, all of you. Hold your whole self in your awareness. With an exhale, shift your attention to the point between the eyebrows. And from this point of awareness, I want you to connect with your sense of hearing. And I want you to scan through the time and space around you and find a sound that's constant. And I want you to use that constant sound as your anchor. That's your whole point of focus right now. All of your intention is listening to that one constant sound. As you hear the sound, feel the body move as a result of the breath. Hear the sound. Feel the breath. Don't wander off. Just bring your attention back to that sound. Feel the breath. Now I want you to dial in your awareness to a more subtle space. And you have to be very gentle with your switch of attention. But I'd like you to now focus on the area that's just like a centimeter above your skin. You can start by feeling into the hands and the feet first. Do you notice any tingling? In your fingertips or palms? Can you feel the energy in the soles of the feet? Take
take a moment to be quiet, be patient, and feel this subtle energy moving in and around the body. Find your way back to your breath. And start to deepen the breath. With each deeper exhalation, start to move the fingers and the toes, the ankles and the wrists, the elbows, the knees, and your nose. Gotta reach the arms up overhead. Stretch your body in two directions. And a first morning stretch, stretching into the right and left sides. Good. And then from here, bend your knees, and we're gonna roll onto the left side. So this whole posture, this whole sequence is designed to prepare us for meditation. So do your best to maintain the meditative state, this sattvic quality that is permeating the whole body and mind. And then from here, make your way up to a seated posture. We incorporated a little bit of pranayama already. So just in the interest of time, we'll move right into meditation. So sitting up tall, hands in your lap or on your knees. And we'll just do a little bit of so hum breathing. As you inhale, listen closely as the breath makes the sound so. And as you exhale, the breath makes the sound hum. I am. So hum. And take a moment now as we come out of our meditation to let the emotions and the feelings of joy and excitement start to fill your whole body and mind. And if you don't have something that you're excited about, make it up. Think of something that excites you and let that feeling fill every single cell in your body. Surround all of your organs and tissues with this joy and excitement for life. And find a sense of enthusiasm for whatever's coming next, whether it's dinner or sleep or work. Be enthused, be excited about your life. Bringing our hands together at heart center. Closing our time and space together with the sound Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Inviting a nice deep breath in. Ah. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste, beautiful goddesses and beings, whether you're with us live or not. Oh, I'm like all turned around. 
<laughs> it's so lovely to share this space with you. I hope you guys enjoyed that sequence. Maybe you're just going to sail right off into meditation now. <laughs>